want to just take a moment to put on your radar an incident that happened on June 2nd in Revere Beach, Mass., just outside of Boston. You may already be somewhat familiar with this incident as it was posted to Photography's Not a Crime by Carlos Miller and to Coplock.org by Tim Freeman, but I just wanted to go a bit more in depth as I was able to speak with Anthony, the driver who was stopped during that incident. Anthony and his friend had been at Revere Beach enjoying the day. After a while, they decided to leave, got in Anthony's car, and started to drive away. They approached a stop sign, and while there, saw a road pirate vehicle with markings of the Massachusetts State Patrol outfit rolling past. The driver of that vehicle, Taylor Ribido, locked eyes with Anthony. By the time Anthony turned onto the road, Ribido had stopped his car as if to wait. Anthony then stopped well behind Ribido. Ten minutes passed, then Anthony decided to move on. As he passed Ribido's vehicle, Ribido, who had been standing outside, quickly got in his vehicle, followed Anthony, and initiated his emergency lights. Anthony, perplexed about why he was being stopped, as he didn't do anything criminal, sought clarification. He was met with hostility. Sir, license and registration, please. All right, so you don't have to tell me why you pulled right me over? I get your license registration, I will let you All know right. why you were I'm stopped. recording this anyways. Okay, sir, that's fine. So I have to give you my license and registration before you tell me what I was talking about? Correct, as I requested for the seventh time. And that's the law, though? That's the law. What, what statute is that? What statute? Yeah. Sir, I'm not going to start naming off chapters and sections right now. It's the law that you provide your license and registration while operating a motor vehicle in a public way. Okay? License and registration, now. Here's my license. What's your name and badge number, by the way? Sir? My name is Trooper Taylor Robidoux. My ID number is 3700. This is under that I don't want to until you tell me what I'm pulling over for. Okay. As All I right. stated to you, as soon as I obtained your license registration. Let's stop here for a moment. According to Ribido, any driver on a Massachusetts road has to produce ID upon command by someone wearing a badge, whether or not they can point to any victim or any claim of any victim. Does that make sense? I'll tell, tell you the reason you're getting pulled over, which is tinted windows. All right, sir? Do you know the percentage of your uh, window tint? No, do you? I don't. They, they look extremely dark, though. Okay? Okay. Did you get the windows tinted, or...? It came like this. You bought the car like this? Yeah. Okay. By you acting the way that you're acting, is How am I acting? I'm just asking you why you pulled me over. How's that acting? By questioning anything? my authority for asking your Questioning your authority. What authority do you have? Okay. I've already explained this to you numerous times, sir. Okay. Anthony's buddy also thought the stop was pretty ridiculous. They waited, and they waited, and when Ribido finally came back, his colleague Browning was tagging along as well. Sir, can you step out of the vehicle for me? For what step reason? Out of the vehicle, sir. For what reason? Step out of the vehicle, sir. For what reason? I'm going to ask you one more time to step out of the vehicle, okay? Please put your phone down, okay? No, it's just for, for both of our accountability. Can I ask you what the reason is why I have to step out of the sir, vehicle? You told me I was pulled over for tinted windows. Because of your behavior, sir. You refused to okay. give me license and registration. I didn't Please refuse. He has my license and registration. Yeah, after he okay. asked you about ten times. You step, step out of the vehicle, All I asked sir. was why I was being pulled over. You step out of the vehicle. One more time. No, I'm all right. It's my law. It's my right not to have to step out of the vehicle if I'm pulled over for tinted windows. Sir, step out of the vehicle. We have been extremely patient with you, okay? We're not, we're not. Thank you. This is harassment. Step out of the vehicle for tinted windows? Correct. That don't even make sense. Put the phone down. Put the phone. No. You can put it on the dash. No, nope, I'm holding my phone. You don't have... No, sir. you don't have, you cannot enter my vehicle. I don't give nobody permission to enter my vehicle. I'm taking my, shutting my vehicle off, locking my doors. Do not touch my personal property, please. Hey. Do not touch my personal property, please. Put the phone down now. For what? Well, yes, my, what are you doing? Oh my God. What, what's going on? Here. I'm out of the vehicle. Thank you. 
Ribido and Browning stepped back and communicated with their colleagues via radio, trying to dig up something that they could cite as justification for caging Anthony. Anthony, again, who's harmed no one, waited. Uh, sir, you sure you don't have anything on yes. Honestly? Honestly, if you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. I treated you with respect. I asked you to treat me with zero respect. I asked you why you pulled me over. You told me I had to give you my license and registration first. I gave you my license and registration. You told me why I was being pulled over for tinted windows. I have the right to have my phone in my hand, my personal property. I didn't break any laws. Your phone is still recording. I didn't break any laws. I just want my ticket and I can go on my way. What's so hot about that? Well, have, how am I acting? No, I just have my right that I can drive down the street, get pulled over. So nervous? Because I have you handcuffing me with gun on your hip. Two people. Are you handcuffed? Yeah, but you're slamming me around. That's why I'm nervous. You're slamming you around. Yeah, you just did. That's why I'm nervous. How are you slammed around? Look, come on. How are you slammed around? Come on, come on. Look how you're treating me. Did I do? Did I commit any crime? Did I commit a crime? That's all I want to know. Did I give you authorization to search me for tinted windows? I don't want to have to see that. Okay, stay here. All right. Do you have any identification on you, sir? Huh? You don't have your seatbelt on you in the car. You just took it off? Hey! And that's it. The recording just ends abruptly. Anthony told me that after his short conversation with Rabadou between the vehicles, um, that he had asked Rabadou if he was being detained, and that Rabadou told him no, and turned and started to walk back to his vehicle. Anthony then took a couple steps toward his own vehicle and reached for his phone. And that's when you hear, hey, hey, being shouted by Browning, who slapped the phone out of Anthony's hand, grabbed it, and turned it off. Rabadou and Browning then put Anthony in handcuffs and put him in the back of the road pirate vehicle with the windows up for an hour. During that time, Rabadou and Browning searched Anthony's car. They even went so far as to look in the engine compartment and to remove the air filter. What was their cause? At one point, Rabadou returned to his vehicle, opened the back door, and took Anthony's keys from his pocket before returning to Anthony's vehicle, unlocking the locked glove box and the locked trunk. Anthony made clear that he did not consent to a search, yet he was ignored and called untrustworthy by Rabadou, who also said multiple times, I don't need a warrant. Anthony also noted that when he complained to Rabadou about the heat inside the enclosed vehicle, noting his asthma, Rabadou laughed at him and told him that his asthma hadn't stopped him from running his mouth at 100 miles per hour before. After tearing through Anthony's car, Rabadou and Browning stole some of Anthony's property, some plant matter. They also gave him a ransom note for 100 Federal Reserve notes, which Anthony refused to sign. Why do Rabadou and Browning believe they have the right to steal some of Anthony's property? What would it be called if you or I did that? And as an aside, Anthony notes that he has a cannabis card in Massachusetts. So, and what about that extremely dark tent that Rabadou cited as justification for stopping, harassing, and searching Anthony's person and his property? Nothing. Anthony was let go with a warning about the tent. I called the Massachusetts State Patrol Outfit's A5 facility, which is active in that area, Yeah, hey, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records, but I was hoping to speak with... Uh... Browning might be the truck team guy. It doesn't work out of here. Okay. And have you ever heard of Mr. I've never heard of that. Yeah, he might be on the truck team as well. So I call out to uh, to that number I gave you at headquarters and say, please take was. May I help you? Yeah, hi, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records. John Ferris, Lieutenant Dallasboro. Yeah, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records. Okay. What I can do is I can forward you to the complaint intake officer, and even though you're not filing a complaint, he might be able to assist you in standards and training. This is Lieutenant Smith. Yeah, hey, Mr. Smith, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records, but I was hoping to uh, talk with somebody. There was an incident that happened a couple days ago that was video recorded, and it was brought to my attention, and I just would like to call. I don't personally have any interest in filing a complaint. I don't believe... Police policing themselves is going to bring much in the way of accountability, but I did hope to learn some more information about these gentlemen. Okay, who am I speaking with again, please? Uh, I'm just somebody concerned about people's rights being violated. Okay, what's your name, sir? Well, that's not important right now. Okay, um, for the record, I do not consent to you recording me on this phone call. Well, that's fine. So I ask at this time that you, you 
stop recording the phone call. Well, you're a public employee, and this is not being done surreptitiously, so I have every right to record you. Okay. Uh, what's your name, sir? That's not important for my questions. You're a public employee who is supposed to serve the people who pay your salary, and I'm calling to try to accrue some more information about these gentlemen who I thought were needlessly aggressive towards another person stopped. Is that something you can help me uh, facilitate? Do you have a com do you have a complaint against one of our employees? I can I can help you with that. Uh, again, I don't have any intention of filing anything internal, any any uh, complaints. My purpose is to use the court of public opinion to make their actions known to more people, so that more people know how to better protect their rights and perhaps even to not grant legitimacy to. Uh, some of your colleagues that don't deserve it, and to the institution itself. Incidentally, we do, I know you're kind of an anonymous caller and you don't wish to identify yourself, so if you do have a complaint at some point, you can file a complaint anonymously. And there's perverse incentives for the people supposedly investigating their colleagues to side with their colleagues. And that's, just, that's, not, that's not to say, like, you purposely mean anyone any ill will. I don't necessarily believe that. But I just mean that's the incentives that's inherent in, in a structure that's, that's a monopoly, and that's simple economics. Well, I mean, it's not a perfect system, but we, 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 try, we try. Here's the thing, like if we take a complaint, the, the, the troopers also have rights as well. So they're protected typically under the collective bargaining agreement, and the disciplinary process is actually is actually governed by the collective bargaining agreement. The entire concept that a police employee, uh, a, a person who acts, who has on a certain attire at the time, might might claim qualified immunity and therefore not be liable for their actions. The fact that such a double standard is said to exist communicates to me, and I think anyone who understands exactly what that is, that, that there are two classes of people that exist in the current structure of, of policing and safety. There are citizens or civilians and there's police employees and they're uh, subjected to different standards. And that doesn't make sense to me. We're all people. We should be held to the same standard. If I saw this guy on the street wrong somebody else, I would say he's just as wrong whether he had on a badge or not. And, and so I don't think that there's going to be any recourse internally because of the way that the structure's set up. And that's not to be a dig on you. It's just to say that I prefer another avenue to, to try to make a change, and that's through peaceful sharing of ideas and withdrawing consent from this apparatus. So, But I appreciate your time, and I will pass along this information to the individual who, uh, who did have the experience, and, and maybe you'll see that at some point. But. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, Mr. Smith. Have a good day. You're welcome. Have a good day. I will. T take care. If, upon learning a bit more about this incident that happened to Anthony, you want to share your thoughts with the aggressors or their colleagues, feel free to give them a call at 508-820-2300. And to try to mitigate such future occurrences to yourself or other people, I encourage you to really think about how the police apparatus is structured today. Again, it's an institution that claims to protect and serve, but their very own actors say we have no duty to protect the individual and they first claim a right to steal from you to protect you. So do you think you're ever going to get justice or accountability through that system? I sure don't.